Hi there and welcome to Busternet. Yes, this is the Gloucester City Diaries and we are hosting the second leg, the return leg at Webb Stadium. We have an away leg goal to protect. Confidence isn't very high at the moment. Our unbeaten run ended at the hands of Stoke as we attempted to try different permutations before the match against the Athletic Club. And let me say this much. We were shocking in our FA Cup match against uh, Chesterfield. We just couldn't put the ball into the back of the net. Total domination, but still, you know, we played like shit. And then we lost to Stoke. Uh, Stoke hitting us on the counter. Finally, a team that's actually beating us to the counters, but... We didn't play well in this game either and uh, out of forms because we have been resting people. I've been resting Kone because he's going to be suspended for the match against the Athletic Cup and what a big difference he makes and we were resting Colado. So we've got Pablo Mafio who's at 83%. He hasn't been playing as well so he's not at 100% and uh, we head into this match with a couple of question marks on whether or not we can actually perform. I've had to give other players a chance to play. Uh, Goncalo Luiro played the last couple of matches, 7.08 average rating for the last few matches. Not fantastic. Um, so we've had to rest a few players. Uh, but overall, even Joe Hanks, he's had a blip in form. 6.8 for last couple of games. Anonymous player, not really fantastic. Will Gray as well, last couple of games, anonymous. So these two boys who have been the reason we've been playing so well, anonymous in the last game. Even Papa, Aluon and Dae, anonymous in the last few games. 6.6 .6 in the last two games. Very, very sad performances from our team. Uh, 6.7. So you can see, you can notice that, you know, all the matches leading up to this match, we have not been playing well. And uh, do I bring on Cesar Lopez? Now, I've already decided I may not want to sign him. Uh, he gets injured quite a fair bit and his performances are streaky. No, that's the best way for me to put it. And what about Ryan Hardy? There's a lot of question marks about our team. And we now face a team, Athletic Bilbao, who are going to be intent on um, reversing the result they faced. And what about the rest of the English clubs in the Champions League? Well, they've all done well. Um, if you're looking at the rest of the results, uh, we have... Um, Manchester United have gone through. They convincingly hammered Benfica 5-0 away. And uh, the other English clubs that are left in the competition are just uh, ourselves, Liverpool, and uh, Chelsea are out. Chelsea lost to Atletico Madrid on the away goals rule. Or rather, sorry, they lost 3-2 uh, on aggregate. So one English club is down, which is actually a relief for me because... I was about to scream bloody murder because uh, four English clubs in the last 16. Uh, I was thinking to myself, this is this is ridiculous. It's way too overrated. Yeah, I know. I understand the money is great in the game, but sometimes, uh, yeah, small little things like that tend to annoy me. But we have no time to get annoyed. It's time to submit our team. Think about who's going to be playing. How we're going to be playing against this team. Uh, we have options, so what we're going to do is we're going to play on control, fluid. It's kind of like the golden mean, right? I, I still believe it is the golden mean. You can't go very wrong with control fluid. So I'm going to start with control fluid. And it should have the right amount of risk plus the right amount of pressure. Except that we have a slightly normal D-line, so we're going to invite them onto us. Uh, yes, we're going to play slightly deeper. We're going to invite them onto us, and then we're going to try and see whether we can hit them on the break. This is going to be an interesting match. Uh, we're playing a bit cagey at the start, but I want to see how they go. I'm not going to play defensive, very fluid, because then it's too deep against that 4 2 3 1, because it will allow both their central mid, uh, their defensive midfielders into our half. Colado slides in for a hard challenge. Now, I'll be watching Colado very carefully as well. I don't want him to be picking up too many yellow cards. Uh, I think they get wiped off the slate at the quarterfinal stage, if I'm not mistaken. I'm not. I can't remember the rules quite that about yellow cards very well. We'll have to check. Um, Amija to Greek to Colado. In fact, I'm going to go and check now. Oops. We're going to go and check now. Uh, where are we? We are schedule. Champions League. There must be the rules somewhere. Okay. Stats. Overview. Rules. Okay. Yellow cards. Lake 2 match rules. Uh... 
Discipline the following match we also have but one match. No wait, hold on. Okay. I don't see what the yellow cards are. Uh hmm. all right. Quarter final. I thought yellow cards were wiped once you get to the quarterfinals. I'm not sure. So no point looking that far ahead so we're not gonna make it all the way there i think but we're gonna have to we're gonna have to keep an eye out on colado okay craig lewis offside one minute in the pressure seems to be just the right amount we have possession uh and we're able to sweep up behind okay good shall keep this going mamija to colado martinez colado being the sportsman that he is puts the ball out so martinez can get some attention and there comes Sasha, the, the physiotherapist. Johnston to Moore. Moore out wide to Z Gomez. Z Gomez to Olmedo. Olmedo plays it back to Johnston. Johnston, long kick. Greg in the right place at the right time. First touch letting him down. Bengozia, he can't get away from Colado. Colado is just waiting for him. Hangs out wide. Goes out. He looks for support. He does well. Holds on to the ball. I don't believe he's holding on to the ball. But he plays a pretty iffy ball out to... Our fullback hangs again with the ball. Has a chance to get the ball up. As long as he plays simple football, he, he's a superstar. And I shoots. Test the upright for workmanship flaws. Munian off. Mafio wins the ball. Brilliant football. Okay, Endaye with the free kick into the box. More back to Endaye. Endaye will cross this far post. <laughs> they get it away. If we score one goal, I still think that I still think this tie is uh, Bilbao's to lose because Bilbao are the better side, and I suspect they will. They haven't even shown me what they're capable of doing yet. Greek is offside. Still goalless in this tie. Roster City doing a fairly good job of controlling much of the uh, possession. Bengosia outside plays it out to Lake Q. The header, it's a corner for Athletic Club. They are going to take this. Munian to take this. They have few players in the box. Colado clears the danger. Will Greek, can he launch a counter-attack? He gets it to Craig Lewis. Now, Craig Lewis can be a moron at times. Loses the ball and does wonderful things like that. We really need... I want to keep this system because I have this feeling this 4 2 3 one narrow is actually a phenomenal system with the right players. Will probably be unbeatable. This season, we've been using the 4 2 3 one I think, for the latter half of the season. And I have, I'm of the, I'm really of the strong opinion that this system is almost as good as the 4 3 one and maybe at times even better than the 4 3 one However, it requires better players in the final third for you to take advantage of it. And you will probably need players with a multitude of talents. You need the AM to have the drop deep PPM. You will also need um, the two side AMs to have acceleration, pace, off the ball, uh, finishing, composure, crossing, dribbling. So you want them to be all rounders, but you, you basically want them uh, taking advantage of defensive lines. So and decisions will be important for those players. So I have a feeling that with those players in the side, you probably will be scoring a lot of great goals. Uh, if your defenders have the ability, or you, if defenders have the ability to mop up, and you have a Colado in your side, yeah, I suspect it'll be pretty easy, pretty interesting. Uh, here we we definitely missing the services of uh, our left back Kone, who is a uh, Suspended for this match. Munian testing out our keeper. We still haven't won the ball enough to put some pressure on them. Munian. Mamija clears this. Uh, we're not making any changes if you notice. I'm just looking at transitions, enjoying the football. Munian. Martinez. Well, the boys are playing composed at the back. So I'm not going to change much. You look at their front line, 8, 14, 19, 25. They've all got 6.7, so they're not exactly having a stellar performance. Oh, Hanks almost so close to giving us the lead. The boys, look at our defenders at 6.8s. 
there's a 6.7 so all they need is one goal and the whole thing will change Bengozia Gomez again clearing the danger here we go Munian into the box Gil hey they've scored the goal they needed oh, okay that's it we have to come out and play now higher use of side trap damn it our defensive strategy didn't work. We put, we did play deep. We took the risk. Uh, they finally managed to penetrate our defense with a goal in the 25th minute. So now we have to come out and play. So this tie is back. Bilbao's to lose. Hanks. Out to Ndaye. Now to Lewis. The ball's taken off him by Gina. Gina plays it out to touch. That's a throw-in for us in a dangerous spot. As throw-ins go, well, that certainly wasn't worth a highlight. The match has swung in favor of Bilbao. Now we are looking in trouble. And I, our defensive strategy did not work. Lake you. Kone was... See what happens when you don't have one or two players in your team. See, they are almost exclusively coming down our left. Where Kone was uh, playing such an influential part in earlier games. And now without Kone, they are having uh, the run of the left flank. Our left flank. Mafio out wide. Come on, Mafio. Get out. Cross. Give me a cross that we can use. Hanks gets a corner. If we can score a goal before halftime, this game will still be good. Come on, boys. Hanks into the box. Gomez rises more. Oh, he strikes the post. The woodwork has denied us twice in this game. Thirty minutes in. Mamija wins that. And Dae. Off he goes. Hangs. Into space or Lewis. Lewis inside the box. Shoots. A whisk. My word. That's three times he's touched the woodwork. Oh my goodness. We have hit the woodwork three times in this game. Hangs with the corner. More. Gomez rising up. And again, we can't make our chances count. We haven't had a single shot on target, but been playing well. The boys are unfortunate right now to be a goal behind. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Olmedo to Mafio. Mafio to Olmedo. Olmedo to Hanks. Hanks to Greek. Greek to Ndaye. Ndaye looks back and gets one of our players involved. It's another corner. Joe Hanks puts it into the box. Colado. <laughs> <laughs> oh my lord it's now their turn to be playing defensive football and they're playing it well they kept us away from taking a clean shot at their goal okay boys we're going overload fluid um, slightly deeper put a lot more pressure on them corner again Joe Hanks more header oh it's in the back of the net finally the pressure has paid dividends overload has helped okay we're gonna keep this going we're gonna play overload fluid hangs what a corner finally our corners have sorted themselves out gomez it hit the woodwork and went in this time my word the woodwork has been uh the woodwork has been very strange our stadium we have to send a carpenter to have a look at all that woodwork maybe you need some polishing Okay, corner, Munian, Mamija, Genia, and the Herrera shoots is wide. It's 1-1, one, one, Gloucester City 1, Athletic Club 1. Alright, they've gone. Uh, we'll go uh, very fluid control now. They switched to a 4-2-3-1 wide. Attacking. Mentality has been brought up. Alright, Gloucester City have managed to tie the game back, but this game is heading for extra time. Free kick inside the box. Olmedo, Colado, shoots, it's in right at the death. Abel Colado has given us, oh my lord, 
a goal before extra time. We were on the edge of this. Our seats were extra time. Olmedo headed it back for Colado. Abel Colado hits the woodwork and puts the ball in. My word, we have been testing this woodwork the whole damn day. And finally, it's 2-1. Olmedo out to Mafio. The boys are still hungry, but they don't need to be hungry anymore. We are through to the next round. Oh, that was quite the performance from the boys. It took a while. But we finally broke through. Look at the heat map. What heat map? There's no heat map. <laughs> There's zero heat map. This is this is one of those games that has played at intensity as well. Because if you're looking at the stats, right, the match stats will show that we dominated the game. We had three clear cut chances. We hit the woodwork three times. Uh, we were able to pass the ball very well through all three phases. It's surprising when you look at it. We have a D we have a double DM, right? So you think that there'd be a bit of isolation? Nah, nah, nah. Seventy six percent. Look at that. And uh, in terms of, um, yeah, crossing isn't our strength anyway, but, and we didn't really have to commit a lot of fouls, and tackles, and stuff like that in the game. But overall, I say the boys have played very, very well. They both played uh, different variations of the same system. We played a 4 2 3 1 narrow, they played a 4 2 3 1 narrow wide. Unfortunately for them, uh, they had to change. Uh, that change uh, helped them at the start of the game, but didn't help them. Get through to the next round. And let's see. Liverpool had two players sent off in this tie. They were so close to it. I mean, I think if they they took the lead to Keita, then they leveled the match to Dybala, and then they had a penalty in the 23rd minute. Had a player sent off in the 31st minute. They scored, took the lead. Wow, Paris PSG totally destroyed Liverpool at Anfield. That must be tragedy for them. Well, in, the other, in other news, Chelsea beat Leicester. <laughs> So we are through to the next round, and what what do we, what news do we have of the next round? This is going to be interesting. We are going to find out who we are drawn against. Champions League quarterfinal draw is today, and the draw is being made. Yes, Gloucester City will be playing Bayer Leverkusen in the quarterfinals of the Champions League. We are host. Oh no! I always like to play the home leg second, all right. But we have uh, we have played Leverkusen at home. The first leg we'll have to make it count. In other matches, Manchester United play PSG, Real Madrid play Atletico Madrid, and Fenerbahce play AS Monaco. Why couldn't we have gotten Fenerbahce? <laughs> Leverkusen will be tough. Leverkusen at the moment, well, in the Bundesliga, they are leading the table. So they are on fire at the moment. Top of the table, ahead of Bayern, ahead of Hoffenheim, and ahead of Dortmund. So Leverkusen, they're going to be a tough team. So we're going to have to send our senior squad out. We haven't scouted a team yet. So I want my scouts to scout this team. We might should do it right at the death against the Athletic Club Bilbao. Got a feel for my boys uh, right at the end. Colado once again proving that he is indeed my superstar. He may not have all the attributes of a superstar, but boy has he turned, you know, turned into something this season. He has been fantastic. Abel Colado has carried us through to the next round. And uh, it was a lucky old match. We had a corner. Goal from a corner and a goal from a set piece. So it's two set pieces. Like I said before, you really need to focus on your set pieces. Leading up to this match, we were training set pieces as well. So you really want to try and get that side of your game sorted. Now, people have asked me about set pieces. So I'll cover them in the show right now. So how, how do I set up my set pieces? I've got a very simple philosophy when it comes to set pieces. Okay, It's got to do with counterattacks. That's it. So it's that simple. So whenever I set up any set piece, I always have a player closing down. Yes, this position is very important. The closing down guy may not actually win the ball, but what will happen during the counter, uh, if you win the ball, you if you need one player here as well who's only marking the near post. So if the ball goes up, he hits the ball back, it will come to this player or, or he'll, he'll hit it in this direction so that uh, either it goes out for a throw or Craig Lewis will pick it up. Craig, when Craig Lewis picks it up, he'll pass it to Will Greek. Now, why have I got strikers here? Sometimes, uh, generally, I want to have strikers here, and then I will put like uh, Joe Hanks. Supposed, I'm supposed to have Joe Hanks here anyway. So Joe Hanks is supposed to be here, 
and then uh, we have uh, Papa Alone and Daye. But normally, you want to have a player here who can handle the ball, has first touch composure, dribbling, passing, and decisions. And the player that has the most is Papa Alone and Daye in my team. So put him at the edge of the area. Now, I know the edge of the area doesn't get a lot of action, right? He doesn't close down, he doesn't do anything, but the edge of the area will lead counter attacks. So you will have one player closing down here. The ball goes to the guy at the edge of the area. The edge of the area guy plays it out to the guy wide. And this guy up wide, he has to have pace acceleration. He has to have the, the whole package. So either you put uh, you you put him here or you put him here. This chap will usually get up on the end of goals. So what will happen is he, the ball will come here. This guy will clear. He'll play to this guy. This guy will start running forward. Then this guy, he's going to be running, but not as far. He will play the ball into space. This guy is going to come into the box. And this guy is going to come into the box. And then this guy at the back here, he will come into the box. Sometimes you might even see four, four of them inside the box. I've seen it many times when my counter attacks, I've got all three of them waiting to score a goal. So this is an important way to set up the defense routine. It's my defense routine. I've been using it for a while. And it's the best defense routine I think you can get in the game. Uh, the, the key here is this player. Near post, you want somebody marking the near post. You also want a decent player at far post as well. So I usually have uh, Abel Calado or one of my other players who's got good anticipation at the far post. And then you want your you know main hitters here main uh, jumpers in this area. So you, I've got three here, all set up nicely. Abel Calado does not have... Uh, Karim Imaja is here now, so uh, this is a bit of a mistake. I think I've been messing with this. But generally, I will put somebody here who has heading and uh, who can... Yeah, so an anticipation will be here. Heading will be here. So I'll put a guy with anticipation here. I'll put a guy with heading here. And then uh, his jumping reach is only about 12 or 11, but his hitting is 17. He's actually pretty good in the, he's pretty good in the air. Some of my players are pretty good in the air. Usually, oh, that's the reason why it's messed up. Kone is not playing. So usually it's Kone. That's why it's here. <laughs> Sorry, I'm going to put it back. Kone is my player here because uh, he has decent um, hitting. So he normally hits the right way. So he always hits, when he wins the ball, he hits it. He hits it into somebody's face. So that's the reason why it was here. Kone, yes, I forgot all about that. Uh, I don't want to mess with this. I don't want to change my formula because my formula, I gave, I worked on this for a long time. What you have to do is very simple. Once again, make sure you have a player here. This guy has to have passing. He has to be able to pass. He has to have some anticipation. Okay, so he goes up here and then you have a good header here. He will... Um, hit the ball, clear the header at near post if you're lucky, it comes to him, then it comes here, then this guy will pass it to the AMCL or he'll pass it to the striker. Once they are off, they'll come in late into the box. So generally, I have my, the guy who's finishing is here or here. This guy must have first touch composure, dribbling, crossing in the works. He has to be able to hold up the ball because he's going to make a beeline for goal with the ball and then you will not normally see him cutting back and trying to cross to for this. There will be about three boys attacking the box. So that's the corner routine. What about attacking the corner routine? Now, my attacking corner routines are very, very simple. They work on one principle, all right? Possession. So what do I do? I always have one player attacking the ball from deep. It will be a striker. It will be a finisher. It will be somebody who can hold the ball or somebody with long shots, okay? This guy is going to smash the ball when he gets the chance. Now, the important players are these two. I don't choose the best corner kick taker to take corners. I actually take the person, I think any Tom, Dick and Harry who can pass the ball. So they just pass the ball to him. All right. Generally, you want both of them to be decent at crossing. Okay. But this guy is usually Joe Hanks, right? Or Robert, in this case, is Roberto Almedo because Joe Hanks isn't playing. So Joe Hanks will, or another player who's got crossing or good at corner taking will take corners from this position and drop them into the box. So I always offer short option. Why do I offer short option? The whole goal here is to keep possession of the ball. Anyway, when it gets cleared, which it normally sometimes even gets cleared, it gets cleared here. This guy will charge into the box. We have late comers inside the box who can attack the box. So generally what you want is, uh, you want to have a decent guy who can cross the ball for both these positions. You want them both taking it short. You want the 
option to be shot. You want, this is important, you want somebody attacking the ball from deep. You want somebody attacking the far post and you want somebody attacking the near post. So you got these two guys attacking the post and then usually I have somebody, you know, challenging the keeper, making life miserable for the keeper. Other than that, everybody else is just default. The more important thing is your players standing behind. You can even take one of these players and drop them behind here if you are worried in some matches. If you want to protect a lead and you want to keep players back for corner routines, take this guy, drop him back here. But don't touch 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Minimum you need 7. These two are extras. Go forward. They can always be taken off. So if you want to protect a lead, just take him out. You can even get him to lurk outside the area. It makes life even more miserable for them. <laughs> this is worse. This is another option. I use it sometimes. Do it. And you keep possession of the ball. You never will lose the ball. And you will create you will create good goal scoring opportunities. What about free kick routines? Now, free kick routines, well, you know, defending is defending. Put a guy up here who can run away with the ball. That's it. That's all you can do for free kick routines. Defend and attack. Sometimes I am a bit itchy, I put two. But rarely have I done that. What's more important for me is the attack free kick routines. I find that attack free kick routines, I tend to concede goals. Okay, I have seen many games where I concede goals from attack free kick routines. So what I do is I change the default attack free kick routines and I put three at the back and two stay back if needed. Yes, I'm a big coward when it comes to taking attacking free kicks. But, you know, I don't really care. If I have a really good jumper, he'll jump. Other than that, if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. So I don't really care about attack free kick routines because I find that I concede more goals off breaks from these. So I changed mine to be like this. So that I can actually... I don't want to concede goals from an attacking free kick routine. It's such a pain in the ass. It's like a counter attack you're giving to the AI and I don't want to give it any options for counter attacks. And this works very well. And I, and I don't even bother with this. It's mixed. Don't don't change any. I never change anything. What about throw-ins? Throw-ins. Well, I wouldn't mess with throw-ins because they, they are okay at the moment. I mean, we are already scoring so many goals from throw-ins. So just leave it the way it is. The thing I don't like about the set piece routines or throw-ins is there is no defend throw-in corner routine, which I completely dislike. Okay, because I find that we concede a lot of goals from defending throw-ins, and I would like a uh, uh, option to do complete man-to-man -man marking at the back. Yes, for throw-ins, I'd rather have man-to-man -man marking instead of doing zonal. And I find that we don't have uh, we don't have that option right now. So I may want to put that into the features list for SI. Well, I hope you enjoyed this edition of the Gloucester City Diaries. Yes, we are true to the next round of the Champions League. Our league form has taken a bit of a hit. We're still uh, in there with a shout for Champions League spots. But once again, United is bombing away with the title. 10 points clear from second place uh, Liverpool and 12 points away from us. They should sew up the, the Premiership title within the next three games I, I reckon that's what they did last season they sold it up with six games to go well if you have any questions you know where to find me you can always look me up on twitter at bustanet or addicted to fm.com my website once again i thank all my patrols so they continue to support this channel thank you very much for your support i really appreciate it this channel definitely loves you very much because you keep us going so you, all of you take care have a good one i'll catch up with you very soon bye bye <laughs>